if you've used a manual tilt on your snow plow, you know that it's a lot easier if you could do that from the seat. It would speed up the plowing tremendously. Basically, what you need is a hydraulic actuator to push the tilt in and out. Honda has hydraulics on these tractors, but tapping into that system would compromise the Honda reliability, and it wouldn't really be a simple job. KYB makes a motor hydraulic actuator package that's self-contained and is capable of handling the forces on my snowplow. The package I used has a 300 millimeter stroke and barely flipped them out, so I would suggest that you get, get a package that probably has a 250 millimeter stroke. KBY makes one. Uh, and, he, and here are the specifications on that particular actuator package. So the first step I did in adapting this KYB actuator to my plow blade was to draw everything to scale in Google SketchUp. Uh, here's, here's various views of the Google SketchUp files, top, bottom, side, left, right, left. It, it appears that this KBY actuator should fit just fine onto this plow mount. This is retracting. It takes about 7 amps to run this motor pump. Here's the hydraulic ram retracting. Now that ram is, it can, can rotate. Okay, so she's almost completely retracted now. Power supply, 7 amps, 12 volts. The live actuator is actually fabricated from the original Sears 3-inch channel, which seemed to be sturdy enough to handle the forces on that. Now take a look at the 5 8 inch hole through this, which is where the actuator fits. I, I, it kind of is encroached on by the actual frame mount. The uh, bolt holes should be drilled about a half inch further in toward the center of this mount in order to accommodate that, that the bar, the pivot to slip all the way. The dead end of the actuator is, is mounted directly to the fabricated frame, uh, plus a little piece of angle iron in there. Drill the hole in the frame first, then weld a piece, weld or bolt that piece of angle iron to there so you have uh, two space mounting points for the actuator. Here's a photo of the mini motion and the pivot pins mounted to the frame before it was actually installed on the tractor. So it's very important to test fit this mini motion to make sure it will clear the frame and clear the elevator rods. Uh, after I put this together, I noticed that the rear hole in the frame on the dead pivot was a fairly close to the frame and I had to cut about a quarter inch notch in the frame in order to allow the thing to go to full high position. Here you see both of the pivot pin bars, dead and live, installed, ready to go to work. With the mechanical installed, the next step, of course, is the electrical. So we have to determine what kind of wiring we need for this system. The actuator itself takes about 7 amps, so let's double that to about 15. And the relay circuit takes about 150 milliamps, which is really nothing significant. Here's the schematic diagram of the of the electrical actuating system. What we need to do is turn the power off for the plow to stop, turn the power plus voltage for the plow to go one direction and minus voltage for the plow to go, plow to go the other direction. And what, what's needed in this case is a momentary center off DP DT switch, double pole, double throw switch. That's one of the components. The other component is a single pole, single throw, 12 volt, 20 amp relay. I test fitted the wire looms to the tractor and that cut the wire lanes to match the wire looms. So the first step was to solder all the wires to the relay. 
according to the schematic. Now you can use uh, crimp on connectors, you don't have to solder. Then once everything was tested, I put heat shrink on all of the terminals on the relay and the switch. Here's the switch. Note the cross connections in the switch and the two wires going out. And there's the two diodes on the switch. You can eliminate these diodes, but then the relay will be on whenever uh, the tractor ignition is on. Here's the diode what blue wire going to the actual relay. Here's the completed switch assembly and the yellow wire that eventually will go to the ignition. Okay, so here's the uh, bench setup. I've got the, uh, here's a bench testing of the harness. I've got the relay, the switch. I've got the uh, input connected, both the a key, which is a yellow wire, and the brown wire connected to a 12 volt power supply. It's doing 12 volts. And here is the meter, which is connected to the two wires that eventually go to the hydraulic actuator. So I click at one direction on the switch, and you'll see I get a positive 12 volts coming out of the meter. I click in the opposite direction on the switch, and you'll see I get a negative 12 volts coming out of the meter, which reverses the polarity on the um, uh, hydraulic actuator. So that's the bench testing. The next thing to do is to install this puppy in the uh, in the uh, tractor. Once you've verified verify that this harness is working, go ahead and kind of enclose all of the connections, relay, and switch in a piece of heat shrink tubing. Okay, so here's the harness ready to go in the tractor, and my intention is I've got the lower cowl off of the tractor so I could run the wires and everything to the uh, actuator, and my plan is to mount the switch in an existing hole already in the console panel. I had to remove the rubber stopper out of this hole. It took some effort, but the stopper finally came out of there. Anyway, we'll proceed to that. Now install the harness uh, into the tractor. The actuator switch is actually mounted in an existing console hole. The relay is mounted near the battery. Take note here that the harness ground is connected to the same point that a tractor electrical ground is connected to. I used a phantom connector to connect to the 12 volt near the battery. This wire happens to go directly to the 12 volt battery through a 20 amp fuse on the Honda RT tractor. Heat shrink, I then placed heat shrink around the phantom connector for protection. Now the ignition on wire is routed to a convenient point that has plus 12 volts when the ignition switch is turned on. On the RT, this happened to be at the fuse blocks. To avoid any cutting of the insulation or compromise it, I soldered a one inch connector and inserted it directly underneath the fuse contact and wire tied this contact to the wire that was coming out of the contact from the original tractor wiring. Once all these connections are made, you can switch the ignition switch on, connect a voltmeter to the two wires that go to the actuator, and make sure that you have minus 12 off and plus 12 when the switch is activated on the console. Finalize the harness by attaching it securely to the frame using clips at at under, under the engine at the, and at the end of the harness. Also attach the harness loom from the actuator to the front of the frame near the tractor harness. I temporarily used push connectors that would fit this uh, BWD connector until I was able to find a BW connector to actually put on the tractor so I could disconnect the harness. Uh, that's it. Let's take a look at the thing actually working. Okay, we got the plow installed now, and I've got the switch mounted on the dashboard. I wanted to show you uh, how the uh, blade reacts, so let's do the... The blade's resting on the ground right now, so you can see it's got full motion. Let's center it. 